The new season is a new occasion for interesting meetings, incredible discoveries, and curious stories. My name is Konstantin Koksin. I'm an ethnographer, Turkologist, traveler, full member of the Russian Geographical Society, director of the Museum of Nomadic Culture in Moscow. My name is Tinkai Kritova. I live in Kazakhstan. I study the history and culture of the Great Steppe. The culture of nomads of the Great Steppe is my favorite topic, which I have been researching for many years, and I have something to tell about it. I think that we will hear many new and unexpected facts from you. Welcome to Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. Nomads. When we hear this word, everyone has their own associations. Some would imagine countless hordes of Huns or Mongols raiding in Europe. Someone would hear a guitar string playing around gypsy bonfires. Someone would draw reindeer teams running along the northern lights. But who are nomads actually? Tell me, what do you mean by nomads? Что для тебя кочевники? Кого ты называешь этим очень емким словом? You know, it seems to me that these are people who by their nature cannot sit still. They need to move constantly, look for new horizons. Of course, nomadic people are a movement, but what makes them move from place to place? I think this is some kind of feeling inside, some needs, if we are talking about philosophy. No, let's talk right away. We will rely on a healthy approach, which is called materialism, without any mysticism. If we can explain something without resorting to shamans, spirits, prophets, then we will explain that from the point of view of material culture. Well then, everything is simple. How the birds migrate, how the herds migrate, so we follow them, because we have run out of pasture where there is good grass. Real nomads are nomadic shepherds, but in addition to nomadic shepherds, there are nomadic collectors, there are nomadic fishermen, there are gypsies. Why do gypsies roam? They do not breed cattle. Well, probably this is their way of being. This is a special group of mobile population. There are people moving in search of a market for the sale of their goods. 90% of gypsies are artisans, or they are musicians. They perform here, they perform there. We will talk with you about people who are in general moving, not only about nomadic shepherds. Mm -hmm. It is very important to understand that real nomads are not tramps. They are wandering peoples, hunter-gatherers, let's say the natives of Australia, the bushmen of Africa, the Evangs from Siberia. They moved quite randomly from place to place, hunted in vast territories, let's say, so that one aboriginal family could feed. Let's suppose my family was given the Moscow area. Everything is covered by forests, and we wander there, and, for sure, we will find something for ourselves, to feed ourselves. But nomads, nomadic pastoralists, they always go along the same route. That is, nomads are quite attached to their land. Many people think that the nomads went where their eyes were watching. No, I know exactly where I will find my friends, the Mongols or Nenets. Usually they change four pastures, in spring, summer, 
summer, autumn and winter. The corridor is quite wide, 10 to 15 kilometers, but they would follow the same route from century to century, from millennium to millennium. Nomads never occupy other people's pastures. Previously, if your sheep came to my pasture, I would take a saber and go to deal with it. Now, they write complaints to the authorities that the shepherds have grown impudent. They graze on other people's pastures. These are real nomads. The question arises, when did people begin to roam? What do you think? Didn't people wander from the very beginning? Homo sapiens appeared about 100,000 years ago. The people were hunter-gatherers. That is, if you draw a graph of the history of humankind, then for about 100,000 years they would be hunter-gatherers. Then, suddenly, farmers appeared. Someone suggested to drop the grain into the ground, even water it. So you would think, what are the advantages of agriculture? Well, it is just elementary. No need to look for food. It grows here. When archaeologists explored the ancient hunter-gatherers, what they ate was meat, honey, vegetables and grain. We explored the skeleton of the first farmer, and it is rickety sick. Do not confuse ancient farming and modern irrigation systems with many fields. This is primitive digging stick. There is no water. It grows poorly. Maybe some kind of special category of people who could not wander for some reason became farmers? In fact, there were more and more people. They settled before, and then there was nowhere to go. So people moved on to farming. As for nomadic cattle breeding, how did people graze cattle? In general, what do you think is easier, grazing cattle or cultivating the land? I think that grazing cattle is easier. It seems easier for you because you live in Kazakhstan and in a nomadic country with an ancient culture. It is easier to tame a plant. Planted, watered, it grows. It is more difficult with an animal. An animal has character. Although people were hunter-gatherers for a long time, animals were tamed extremely sluggishly. First, a dog was tamed, then a reindeer, then a horse, a sheep. They grazed near the house, and then people went further and further. Shepherd cattle breeding appeared, and when they began to wander very far, they became real nomads. One of the oldest nomads we know, the details of his personal life, all his children. Tell me the name of this nomad. Adam? <laughs> Adam was a gatherer, but you think correctly. This is from the Bible. This is Abraham. Abraham put up tents in the oak wood of Mamre. It was in the Middle East, in North Africa. In the far north, they became nomads in a different way. People caught a wild deer and kept it in a corral. And then they got it out and ate, and gradually they started driving these deers. That is, nomads appeared from the hunters there. That is, there are two options. The first one was when people used to be farmers, kept cattle. Then they went farther from home and began to roam. The second option was the hunters who tamed the animals by chance. They began to roam. So, a nomadic civilization arose. I will call it a nomadic civilization, or nomadic culture, and we will keep in mind the Australian aborigines, Bushmen, and Nanets, and Chukchi, Bedouins, and Tuaregs, and Kyrgyz, Kazakhs, Mongols, all the people who live in movement. Is the term nomadic civilization correct? Well, usually the term civilization is associated with the creation of human literature, tall buildings, monumental works of art. We say Chinese civilization, Indian civilization, European, but more broadly, the term is called culture. And what is culture? This is what man has created. Real culture is not measured by the thickness of written books. Culture is not measured by the height of buildings built. Culture is inside. This is the ability of a person to communicate with the surrounding region reality, to find his place in the world. Here, the nomads surpassed many sedentary civilizations, but probably in a conversation so as not to confuse each other, we will say nomadic culture and urban civilization or Western civilization. 
и городская цивилизация, либо западная mm -hmm. цивилизация. You say urban civilization and correct yourself, western civilization. That is, we can still say that settled lands are the west. Let's get it right. I am an anthropologist, ethnographer. I study different peoples. My specialization happened to be nomadic peoples. And what do you think is a people or ethnos? Well, these are people united by a common ethnic group. Why do people unite? How did the First Nations come about? We do not take the history of the Tower of Babel and the confusion of languages. Now, what do you think? According to what criteria do we, anthropologists, identify people? First of all, this is culture, general culture, self-identification, maybe, which is determined by cultural markers. What difficult terms you use, well done. In fact, for a long time they thought that a people has the basic criteria for determining a people. It is a common origin, a common language, a common religion, and common cultural traditions. So nothing like that. The simplest example is the British and the Americans. They speak the same language, but the ones are Protestants and others are Catholics. They are different. They cannot stand each other. The following example is Spaniards and, say, Bolivians, Argentinians. Argentinians, Chileans, Peruvians, they are all Catholics who speak Spanish, but they are completely different and fought very cruelly with each other for independence, like the Americans with the British. There are many such examples, Bedouins and Arabs, they speak Arabic, they are Muslims, but they are different. It turns out, what is the very marker you mentioned? Self-awareness, who I am. Nomads are united by their passion for movement. They are constant in these movements. But I know that they are different. What is the peculiarity of nomads in different regions of the planet? The emblem of our Museum of Nomadic Culture depicts a certain animal, a generalized animal that carries three houses on its back. This is a tent from the desert, a chum from the tundra, and a yurt from the steppe. These are the three main landscape areas where people still roam. Previously, they used to roam everywhere, but the farmers replaced the nomads. In general, the attitude of nomads to farmers is often shown as the attitude of Abel and Cain. The eternal struggle that began on the pages of the Bible and continues to this day, and Cain's defeat the cattle breeders. I have worked all over the planet with different nomadic peoples, in the highlands of Tibet and the Bolivian Atacama, in the tundra of the Yamal, Chukotka, Taimir, with the aborigines of Australia, with the Bushmen and Maasai of East Africa. But my love is a great step. Трудно было эту историю его создавать, потому что и китайцы, и европейцы, и русские ничего хорошего о врагах не писали. Поэтому выуживай. Because it was the steppe nomads who created the greatest powers. Their story is known. It was hard to recreate the history because the Chinese, the Europeans, and the Russians did not write anything good about the enemies. Therefore, while fishing for the truth among the waste papers of lies, we wrote the history and will continue to write it. It is being created. The mounds are still silent. Only a few have been excavated. There are many mysteries in the history. The nomadic culture of the Great Steppe, speaking generally about this culture, it is the most developed, the richest one. Completeness, cultural value, isolation in a full circle, lack of linear time, all this is typical for nomads of the Great Steppe. The Great Steppe, which we will talk about a lot, is not only a geographical concept. Geographically, the Great Steppe is steppe spaces from the Kingan Mountains in China to the Carpathians in Hungary, where the strip of 
steps end. Now, all the steps are almost plowed up and turned into fields. Some areas remain in reserves. And, of course, in Kazakhstan and in Mongolia, the Great Steppe is still civilization. I dare say, great civilization. There are few such civilizations. It is equal to the great Chinese civilization, European, Arab Muslim, Indian. This culture seems ghostly. When a nomad dismantles a yurt, loads it on a camel or yak, and goes on a journey, only the ashes of the hearth remain in the steppe, which will overgrow with grass, leaving no traces. We have few archaeological finds, and therefore it seems that they never existed, but they do exist. They roam to this day. They roam without affecting the world in which they live. But still, which nomads are different from our steppe nomads as much as possible, but at the same time are nomadic? Probably the Altiplano nomads are most distinguished. This is a highlands in Bolivia and Peru, where the Quechua and Aymara Indians graze alpaca llamas. They are amazingly interesting peoples, and I am proud that three years ago they were discovered in my expedition. No, I did not discover new nations. As the Yellow Papers wrote, I proved that Quechua and Aymara are nomadic groups to this day. You know, nomads are not only united by the fact that they graze cattle and move from place to place, they are united by something more. That is why I am talking generally about the nomadic cultures of the planet. They are united by similar thinking. As the Kazakhs say, the happiness of a man is in the step of freedom. And as the Nenets say, deer are our wings. Every day is in a new place. А как говорят немцы, олени – наши крылья. Каждый день на новом месте. Для меня одним из символов кочевой цивилизации великой степи – for me, one of the symbols of nomadic civilization of the Great Steppe was an old wooden broken wheel, which I found in the steppe grass during the first expedition in Mongolia. It lay abandoned a long time ago. I realized that such wheels were used by the Mongols and the Turks and the Huns. It has not changed. The wheel is one of the most striking symbols of the nomadic civilization of the steppe. The wheel is not only movement in space. A rotation of a wheel is a rotation of time, a wheel of time, a wheel of history. Колесо. Времени. Колесо. История. Тингай, ты живешь в Казахстане? You live in Kazakhstan and travel a lot. Tell me about Kazakh nomads. What is their contribution to the treasury of humanity? Since the nomads were livestock breeders, it seems to me that there was some kind of folk selection. Because, for example, we have horses that could dig grass out from under the snow, even from under the crust. If jute or mass cattle loss happens, there are different, different types of jute. Kara jute, ak jute, for example, there was a thaw and then crust formed. Then they let the herds go. The horses broke the ice with hooves and lambs ran after them. All the breeds of sheep themselves. They were brought out by an almost natural process. Man only controlled this process because man did not know such scientific selection. It just turned out that those sheep who did not carry death on their hooves survived. Only those sheep survived that took the top of the grass and went further. As for horses, they prove themselves in races, favorite games of nomads. We don't know who is the 
We do not know exactly who tamed the horse, but this is an indisputable fact that the nomads were the first to ride the chariot, invent girths and stirrups. The top of nomadic architecture is a yurt. On the one hand, it is very simple. On the other hand, it is an incredibly complex home. How many thousands of years it took people to create empirically this perfection? After all, it all began with a simple chum, a tent turned into a yurt of the Turkic or Mongolian type. This funny story happened to me personally. I spent 10 years in a yurt in the center of Moscow with my wife. When my parents got old, I bought a summer cottage next door to them. There was a house, a hut, a Russian stove. But after having lived in the circular space of the yurt, I realized that I could not live in a square room. So my wife and I put Native American teepee in the yard. Then cold winds blew out, snow fell. The hearth no longer warmed us, so we very carefully, scared of a square space, moved into a hut, began to master it. That is, I myself went this way, the transition from nomadic life to sedentary. Still, I prefer to live in a yurt, because when you wake up from the singing of birds, you hear how the grass grows, you see the stars through the dome, you cannot experience this in any apartment or house. Ни в одной квартире, ни в одном доме такого не пережил. What do you think we, the residents of big cities, can learn something from the nomad or not? The further we move away from nature, the more we move towards technological progress. We can study nature in the smallest details, but we understand it all the worse. Nomads are the opposite. This is very important, but why do we need it in the cities? We live in an artificial world, and both you and me, the residents of big cities, let them wander in the steppes. What will they give us? This is an attitude towards the world. It is most important. Since no written sources have been preserved, the achievements of the nomads seem ghostly, like their very life in the steppe. Therefore, the sedentary neighbors said, ah, they are just wild and have not created anything. But this is fundamentally not true. There are no people without culture. I traveled the whole planet. I have never met a people without their own culture and without their own beliefs. So, give me the examples of the Kazakh reverent attitude to the environment. Do not pollute water, do not pollute soil, and do not extinguish the fire in some non-clean ways. I have witnessed a surprisingly reverent attitude of modern nomads to the world around them, something worth learning. If you take something in the step, put at least hair from the horse's mane. Passing the past, remember the spirits, remember the ancestors. This is everywhere. The old man Ganja, the Mongol who was my guide during the summer expeditions to northern Mongolia, gave me horses. When we dug wild onions to prepare food, he first took the seeds, dug out the onion, and planted the seeds in the ground. This is an amazing reverent attitude. However, at the same time, nomads leave mountains of garbage behind them. Have you heard about this? Modern nomads? Stoyanka, Mongolov. Modern nomads, the camps of the Mongols, Kazakh shepherds, Nenets reindeer herders, is a garbage dump. Why with such a reverent attitude towards the world? When they talk with trees and grass, do they throw garbage? I have been looking for an answer to this question for a long time. It turned out that plastic, glass have appeared recently. Before that, some 50 years ago, everything as a nomadic family was made of leather and felt or of wood. Therefore, they threw it and it was immediately rotting. A mechanism for dealing with has not emerged yet. Traditions and habits have not arisen, have not been formed. Here it is necessary to prompt, it is necessary to explain, then it will work.
I think it is very important to attract our modern youth to these traditional beliefs, to traditional habits, to traditional way of life of the Kazakh. The most important thing to hold on to is that every Kazakh knows what family he comes from. You need to find shepherds of this family and send there. They will sing their songs, tell their legends. It will be deeper and more accurate. That is, it should be done not only by the state, but also by the citizens. Aksakals would be happy to educate us. Little children are ready to listen to the elderly. They converge like a matrix with a punch, converge perfectly with the support of the state. This will be a very beautiful project when each clan will bring up its youth members who now live in the city but should not leave the land completely. It is very important that today's girls and boys could understand that the world has not been studied yet. Because parents here, the child does not want anything. Why? Because he or she takes a smartphone, clicks and gets the answer to any questions. They think, why should we study? Everything has been discovered so far. However, this is a myth, a bad myth, which they must refute and show to the children that the world is beautiful and mysterious. And then they will go their own paths and make great discoveries. У человечества не так много путей для развития. Два варианта. Humanity does not have many options for development. There are two options, either a nuclear war or a global environmental disaster. The second option, by the way, is more likely to happen than the first. As Yuri Visbor sang, on the remains of huge conflagrations, the Pithecanthropus was preparing a spear. Either we lose everything in general. When archaeologists from another galaxy arrive on this disfigured, poisoned planet, they will be amazed. 100,000 years people live in harmony with the world and with each other, and then destroyed the world and themselves. Still, there is hope. When civilization perishes, someone will survive. Moreover, I already know that the nomads will. Therefore, I call all nomads a reserve of humanity. These people will be able to live without all the benefits of civilization and give rise to a new humanity in the event of a global catastrophe. Well, you're talking about the scenario of a bad end, if the nomads have to become a reserve of civilization. But if all the same everything is fine in the future, the nomads will have a future anyway. В небесах густых вечерних разгорались звезды. Жаль, что я пришел в кочевье поздно, слишком поздно. I will answer you with verses. Stars flashed in the thick evening sky. It's a pity that I came to the nomad camp late, too late. My heart aches unbearably. Years will go by fast. Everything that is dear in the steppe will be crushed by years. Gray smoke will become spicy. In the midst of feather grass and poppy, I will remain alone in the steppe to mourn it. In the melting camps, in the abandoned wagons, I will read at parting on the heavenly scrolls. И в истаявших кочевьях, в брошенных кибитках Прочитаю нет прощения на небесных слитках. Эти стихи написал давным-давно в Монголии. I wrote this poem a long time ago in Mongolia. Then it seemed to me that the nomadic culture was leaving, that I was the last traveler who found this, these children rushing somewhere to the rising sun. Years past, my opinion has changed. Nomadic culture is a living culture, a living tradition. Not only my children, but also my grandchildren and great-grandchildren will be able to admire the flowering steppe and drink kumis. Смогут любоваться цветущей степью и пить кумыс в ютах.